We now via Skype, New South Wales leader of the One Nation Party and Upper House MP, Mark Latham. Mark, thank you very much for your time. I want to start with your colleague, and I say colleague because he's in the Upper House in New South Wales with you, but you understand the inside workings of the Labor Party better than anyone. Stephen Conroy said to me last night, uh, this guy is an embarrassment to the Labor Party. Well, why is he still in office? Well, he's representative of what the New South Wales Labor Party has become. Uh, we know for many years now there's been undue Chinese political influence inside New South Wales Labor Party. We had the Sam Dastiari scandal where he's basically admitted now that the party was accepting donations from a Chinese spy, Wong Zhong Mo. And uh, that was a, a shocking circumstance and Dastiari had to be sacked. We're still awaiting an ICAC report in New South Wales about the Chinese money stuffed into an Aldi bag and all the disgrace that's brought upon the New South Wales Labor Party. So you'd have to think Jodie McKay, if she was fair income now, she'd be uh, terminating the membership and the pre-selection of Shaket Mosselman, who's made these bizarre comments that uh, China has handled the uh, coronavirus well, that uh, Xi Jinping has shown wonderful leadership. Uh, the truth is, on three fronts, uh, China was a rogue state on this. Uh, they knew after yeah. SARS in 2002 they had to close down the wet markets. Uh, they knew that uh, they were providing misleading advice to the World Health Authority on New Year's Eve about this virus, and, and then they let uh, half a million people fly out of Wuhan, and that's how we've got the global contagion. Well, this bloke's had, you know, nine or so uh, sponsored, i.e. paid, uh, trips to China to do, you know, God knows what. There's been other allegations levelled to him about connections to a former staff of the Chinese Communist Party, and I don't think you can ever leave it. It's a bit like Hotel California, a member of the Communist Party uh, for life. Um, what I can't fathom is, is how this becomes such a feature of, of Labor. It's become such a feature of the Labor Party in New South Wales, as you say. We saw last year there was a right-wing conference in Sydney, quite legitimate, uh, lots of interesting speakers there to toss up ideas about the centre-right. A number of people, including a former Prime Minister and Tony Abbott, were investigated just for turning up and saying something on the public record at a centre-right conference. Where's the authorities here if we really have these foreign agent laws? Why isn't uh, Musulman being looked at? Well, very good question. There's sustained foreign agent influence inside the New South Wales Labor Party. Why are they dependent on Chinese money and um, uh, Chinese uh, adulation and, and, and relationship this way, way out of proportion from the facts about the coronavirus? Well, I, I think the New South Wales Labor Party's hollowed out in terms of what they believe in. If you leave a vacuum inside a political party, any old thing will fill it. And seemingly, yeah, I... from Dastiari onwards, uh, Chinese money and Chinese influence has filled that vacuum for a party that really doesn't stand for much these days. Well, this is a job for Anthony Albanese too. And, you know, at the time that he's not involved in the national fight per se, uh, there's no parliamentary work for the Labor Party. Uh, they've got a few months where they're not in the middle of things like the, the government, certainly Scott Morrison and Greg Hunt are. The clean-up of the New South Wales division, where he is from, should happen in earnest. And, and so it should for the rest of the policymakers, I have to say, in Canberra. They're not front and centre in the coronavirus fight. So, you know, go to this point we you and I have been talking about, you know, what does Australia look like when we get through this in terms of our relationship with China? Uh, we know that there's been a six-month moratorium on the foreign investment rules. Uh, clearly, we can't go back to business as usual once we're through that moratorium. What should it look like, Mark Latham? Well, uh, we need to look at this in, in, in many respects. Uh, Australia certainly still needs to trade. I, I, a nation of 25 million can't just uh, pull up the tariff walls and uh, protect itself from the rest of the world and think you can be viable with modern technology, have a modern economy where you're limiting your customer base to 25 million people. So we need to trade. Maybe there's an argument in some of these areas to revise the trade agreements if they've been unfair on Australia. But we need to be a trading nation. Uh, we need to invest a lot more in infrastructure. Uh, we need productivity improvements. Uh, we need uh, massive improvements to our school education system where we're falling behind nations like China. It's not just uh, 
the issue about the, the, the health emergency. Uh, you look at the recent data about schools, that's appalling in terms of Australia's competitiveness. But we've also got to recast the relationship with China. When I was a federal MP, I, I was a supporter of the relationship. Everyone understood the uh, economic benefits from that. But there are two devastating black marks against China in recent times. The political interference in Australian politics, and we've just talked about New South Wales Labor, and the rogue state actions during this uh, coronavirus contagion. And uh, Australia's going to lead the diplomatic effort to impress upon China the absolute need for it to be a good international citizen. And that should start at the end of this year. The United Nations, if it's worth a cracker, instead of having a conference in Glasgow in November about climate change, that conference should be about global economic recovery and a review of what happened, the causes of coronavirus spread, the role of China and China's rogue state actions, and to bring them to some form of international account so I think that uh, process through Australian diplomacy, talking to Donald Trump about it, obviously America is going to play a major role in this, but also through the United Nations where we pay our membership fees and don't get very good value in general. Yeah, well, we'll see if that is taken up uh, by uh, global bodies. I think the biggest dog in the fight at the moment is President Trump in terms of putting pressure on China, but he's up for uh, re-election in November and these are strange times. Anything could happen. I have to leave it there, Mark Latham, but I very much appreciate your time.